Hi, my name is Mike and I am one of the internal consultancy tutors here at The Profs. Now, I've been working as a consultancy tutor as well as a tuition tutor for many, many years, helping several students get onto the universities of their choice, um, whilst I've actually studied four different degrees in mathematics and physics myself, um, including at the universities of Exeter, the University of Cambridge, which is the university of, that we're going to be talking about in this video, as well as the University of Warwick, where I've studied uh, mathematics for real world systems um, in part of their, one of their doctoral training centres, um, and also um, computational chemistry as an MPhil. So my interest in mathematics and science at degree level, undergraduate and postgraduate, um, is very, very vast, and it's something that has always fascinated me. Something that I have a lot of pleasure in talking about today is the University of Cambridge's part three course in astrophysics. Funnily enough, a place where Stephen Hawking went to himself uh, in order to study black holes, uh, which is a, a topic of interest of mine, actually, that I really, really love. Perhaps a video for another time. In terms of admissions rates for this course, it's incredibly competitive. In fact, one of the most competitive I have ever seen, with an uh, admissions rate of only 3.2%, um, given their last admissions cycle. Um, now, don't fret, though, because at the Profs, we have an tr amazing track record of uh, getting people into Oxford and Cambridge, where actually we can um, times or multiply that admissions rate by 17, up to about 55%, um, which is an incredible jump in uh, your ability to get accepted onto this course. So if you like anything that you hear and see in this video, then please um, put something in the comment section. Uh, if you have any further questions, give this video a like, a subscribe, share it with your friends. We'd really love to see some engagement on our YouTube channel. Um, and also follow the link in the description below or give us a call if you want to talk to us in person. For well, now though, for today, here are my top five tips of how to get onto this course. And my first top tip is something that I'm going to be saying for every single Oxbridge course. Make sure you know what you're getting yourself in for. It's not a good idea to apply for Oxford or Cambridge um, just to be able to say that you actually want to get the badge that says that you've gone there. It's not a good enough reason to study at a university like Cambridge. So what is a better reason? A better reason to go there is perhaps rigorous levels of study. Maybe it's progression in going into professional academia. Those are much better reasons to go. If you really do envision yourself going down that route after having just done a maths or physics degree at your own university, um, then maybe this is indeed the right course for you. But please don't apply for this expecting just to be able to do this for fun and nothing else. We've got to, got to know exactly what is involved. And as part of this particular course, not only do we have a lot of taught modules like we do in the part three for mathematics at Cambridge, if you want to have a look at that video, then also look at the description in below for more information on that. But we also have a large component of this course that is based on a research project and your ability to be able to present it in front of a panel of people. There is a lot of more interaction with this course over the part three maths course, although a lot of the modules overlap in terms of what you can do. So make sure that only are you sort of good at your subject, but you're very good at communicating it with people. You're not afraid to engage in academic discussion and you're not intimidated by talking about these sorts of things with leading academic and industry experts in the subject. So it's really important that you know all the ins and outs of what this course involves. And you can find that information very easily by going onto their course page where they literally do just split up percentage by percentage how much is involved with the research, how much is involved with the taught element of it. Now, my second tip for getting onto this course is I really, really want to see a strong academic engagement with the subject. One thing you absolutely need before you even consider is a good two one in something like physics, mathematics or astrophysics or something scientifically related from another 
a university, ideally from a Russell Group university. So if it's not from there, maybe getting a first will be a safer bet. Um, so ways that you can engage in that at a university level. Perhaps there was a particular project that you engaged in or a scientific experiment that you really, really like that you could perhaps talk about. Maybe you've attended sort of academic conferences yourself that go into more detail about sort of the advancements in astrophysics of today. Definitely keep up with modern day research uh, into actually where astrophysics is bringing us. Uh, there's been actually quite a few amazing discoveries over the last decade at the very least, for instance. And I mentioned, uh, you know, the fact that I studied black holes. Um, we found within the last 10 years a way of being able to visualize black holes with technology. They were only hypothesized before, but we can see them now. Um, that's kind of amazing. Again, back to Stephen Hawking. Don't want to mention him too much in this video. But if we're talking about things like this as part of our application, if that's one of the reasons you want to go and do astrophysics is to work in that area, talk about it. So do have in mind as well, uh, not only the fact that you want to show that you're very good at engaging uh, sort of in academic discussions, you're great in group projects, you're good in research, but also have in mind a particular area of astrophysics you want to specialize in. Um, the way that I think about this is that you kind of want to start the course tomorrow um, you want to imagine that in your head, you want to have a good plan of the modules that you can talk about. Um, you can go into specifics on this in your application. You're not going in for an undergrad application or a UCAS application where you can apply anywhere. As a postgrad application, you can really be specific to Oxford. So make use of that uh, in your application. Uh, now my third tip, um, and this is really important, uh, is know all of the stages of the admission process. Um, so there are going to be interviews with this. Not, that doesn't necessarily happen with every Cambridge uh, interview process, uh, or admissions process rather. But in this case, there are interviews. You are going to have to use that as an ability not only to talk about why you love the subject, why you might be good at presenting it, but also you might need to answer some questions on astrophysics on the spot just so that they can test your aptitude. That also might include a strong understanding of mathematics. We cannot go into a science degree without having one or the other. So please do not assume you can get away with get going onto an astrophysics course without having done any mathematics. So we have the interview process. We have the personal statement. We have references and recommendations and it's good to try to get these sooner rather than later because that gives you a little bit of control as to if you have a good relationship especially with the people that you're working with or what could be said on your application and having said that try to facilitate really good relationships with your lecturers go to every lecture if there is a relevant course that would help you get on to astrophysics um, do talk about uh, like with them about problem sheets that you might be working on uh, in their opening hours or in their open hours. Um, do make sure to keep in touch with them. Um, when you're sending an email to them, you really want to find a common ground where you can say, you were responsible for me making this decision on applying for this course at Cambridge. Um, I would be honored if you could help me um, by writing a reference explaining my strengths within the subject and my potential to be able to grow uh, within it. So it's really, really important that we are engaging with our uh, professors, with our personal tutor. We do not want to leave it until after we finished our degree to try to facilitate such a relationship. Um, now my next tip, uh, getting onto a course like this, uh, and this is a really, really important one, is make sure that when you are doing this application, your funding is sorted. It's a self-funded course, usually. There isn't a lot of funding options available. Um, so actually, this is the case for a lot of part three courses at Cambridge, unfortunately. There aren't too many scholarships available. There aren't necessarily too many uh, bursaries that are available. You do want to look into different colleges to make sure what is on offer for you, what applies. It could be based on where you come from. It could be based already on your financial background, if you're happy to prove that. But in most cases, there won't be too much available. 
So it's better to make this decision on going onto a course like this at the beginning of your undergraduate degree that gives you a few years to save of a few thousand, however many um, pounds this course requires for you to be able to pay for it, if that is you. But that also gives you an opportunity to be able to engage in work experience opportunities that are incredibly relevant, that further your interest in the subject. Um, such as, for example, volunteering in a lab or actually helping out uh, facilitating an astrophysics competition. Maybe you're doing some voluntary work uh, with like preparation for high school students getting ready for like the, uh, an astrophysics Olympiad of some sort. However, grand, whatever you're doing, we want to hear about it. We want to see it in your application. Um, so you're actually covering two different areas there. Um, which is fantastic. You're covering your interest, but at the same time, you're making sure that you afford the course and it is still a possibility for you to be able to go for. Don't leave it to last minute to try to get that sorted. Moving on to my next tip, make sure that you have a five year career plan when you're making this application. Now we usually say five because I not only want to know if you're going into industry, what you're going to initially try to do to keep yourself afloat financially, but also I want to know about your dream profession. What do you want to be able to do in the future that you can only do if you were to do this course at Cambridge? I really want to know about that. Um, so you have to mention this in the personal statement. They're not going to accept, again, a candidate who is only going there for the prestige. Um, there needs to be a really good reason that you want to go and we really, really want to be able to hear about it uh, as part of your application. So please don't forget to mention that. It's so important. I make that its own point. Don't forget to put down your career ambitions. It's not something you have to be beholden to when you're on your degree, um, but it's really important that we see some forethought of how that's going to be the case. Maybe you can mention a module of interest that is part of the astrophysics course that can help you um, gain the necessary skills in order to go into that profession. Saying that though, most people who go in a course like this perhaps want to go into professional academia. Uh, and if that's the case, that is a very good thing to be able to put down one of the best universities to go to uh, in order to do that. Um, so whatever your motivation is, do put that down. They would love to hit, see that from you. Um, as well as anybody else hopefully reading your application. That brings me on to my final point, and that is get the help of an Oxbridge tutor. Applying for Cambridge or Oxford for that matter is a very different process, I believe, uh, than applying for any other university. Um, it's very special. There's lots of different things that are involved in that process that you don't really see anywhere else. So it's great to get some guidance from people who have been there themselves, who have had experience in getting people into Oxford and Cambridge with a very good success rate. Again, 55% five, of our applicants who are hoping to go to Oxford and Cambridge uh, get in. That is much higher than the majority of our courses. We also have 95% uh, of all of our students get into their first and second choice universities. These are amazing uh, statistics. We believe that's backed up by experience and evidence. And the best way for you to believe that is by getting in contact with us, asking us more about our services, meeting uh, a few of us from the consultancy team and helping you directly with your application. But if you have any further questions, make sure to go into that comment section, um, enter in some questions. We'd be more than happy to look at a few of those for you and get back to you as soon as possible. Or if you want to speak to us a bit more directly, why not give us a call with a, the number that is appearing on screen right now and we would love to be able to answer any questions directly that you may have in terms of getting onto a course like this. Uh, other than that, until we hear from you next, best of luck with your application.